So in the last part, we basically got an understanding of what pre-algebra is and what I'm bound to teach you guys. But in this part, we're going to actually start learning some of the stuff that I promised to teach you guys. So um, in the last part, I explained to you guys that the first thing we're going to really crack down and learn are called variables. And variables are basically pieces of information that can change depending on certain things that we do to them. Um, for example, let's say one day I had a white chair. And let's say someone spilled yellow paint on them. Now I had a yellow chair. So the chair was varying in its color depending on the paint that was thrown at it. So the paint was basically affecting the variable. So paint was affecting the color of the chair that I had. In a similar manner, let's say we had a number called 9. And let's say we added 5 to it. And if, if you guys all know, 9 plus 5 equals 14. So our new number became 14 from 9. So the number that was varying was 9. That gets kind of confusing, right? How do you distinguish which number is varying depending on what we're doing to it? How can we tell which number is being varied? Well, to do that, we substitute these numbers with certain letters. Now, we tend to just, you know, set letters equal to numbers because, you know, letters aren't really used in math, obviously. So by implementing a letter, it's kind of a universal standard way of letting people know that we're using a letter. And a common letter to use is X. You'll find that a lot of people use X as, the, as their variable, mainly because it's simple and, you know, I, apart from that reason, I really couldn't tell you anything. So basically, variables are little substitutions that we use in order to display our content more in the value of our liking. So one way of displaying the content that I showed you right here would be 9 plus 5 equals 14. Oh, wait, it's kind of messing up. 9 plus 5 equals 14. But let's say that instead of saying 9 plus 5 plus 14, we want to change this 9 to make, let people know that they can change this number. What we can do is first declare that x equals 9. So we're just going to say, all right, for this next situation, x is going to be equal to 9. And then what we can do is instead of saying 9, we can say x. x plus 5 equals 14. So since we declare that x equals 9, we're basically saying, all right, everywhere that you see a 9, we want you to take that 9, get rid of that 9, and put it with x, because x equals 9 after all, right? That's like saying, um, you know, it's a synonym, so to speak. Um, music is synonymous, I guess, with sound. So in saying saying that sound plays out of the speaker, you can say music plays out of the speaker, and it gets the same meaning. In a similar manner, we're basically saying that these two are, I guess you could say, synonyms. Which means x is going to be equal to 9. So x plus 5 is going to be, well, I don't know. Since x is the same thing as saying 9, what we can basically say now is that x plus 5 is like saying 9 plus 5. So x plus 5 would be 14. That's a bad place to write it. So as you can um, probably imagine, you know, variables are very useful if we want to tell the user to input something. So if we wanted to say, um, you know, you can add any, any value of x to 4. Any value. You can specify whatever you want to x, and I'll solve it for you. So we could say, for example, all right, well, if that's the case, then we want x to be equal to 4. Then if that's the case, since x is equal to 4, we basically replace the x with 4, and your answer is 8. If we say x equals 7, we basically say 7 plus 4, which is the same thing as saying 11. So as you can see, variables are basically one way of saying two numbers, or rather two expressions. Well, expressions is the proper term. I guess two digits. I guess, are synonymous with each other. So we can say x is synonymous with 4. As a result, if we wanted to say 4 plus 4 equals 8, we can also say x plus x. So, yeah. 
that's it for this tutorial. See you guys next time.